Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first of three, probably, might do six videos just to keep them shorter, uh, videos showing the solutions for the uh, April 26th quiz from Algebra 2, which covers factoring, solving by factoring, and the LCM of polynomial expressions, rational expressions. Uh, you are expected to watch the portion of each video that covers the problems that you missed on the quiz, and you are expected to copy down the entire solution for the problems that you missed in order to continue with this process of earning back your points, which is very, very important this time of year. So, this video will definitely cover the solutions to 1, 2, and 3. We will see exactly how long that takes and then make a decision about 4, 5, and 6. So here we go. The directions say factor each expression completely, and it asks us to box your answer. I did not really take off any points if you didn't box your answer, but it would be nice if you would. So number one is a basic trinomial. We are looking for a pair of numbers that multiplies to 6 and adds to 5. Looking for a pair of numbers that multiplies to 6 and adds to 5. That would be 2 and 3. Since this is basic trinomial factoring, we can go straight to our answer, and we should have the binomials x plus 2 and x plus 3. Number 2 has a GCF, so our first step should be to remove the GCF. Now, the big mistake here was that people thought that the GCF just disappears. It does not. We factor out that 2, and now we have 2 times the trinomial x squared minus 4x plus 5. Now, from there, we're looking for a pair of numbers that multiplies to 5 and adds to negative 4. Think about that. We want a pair of numbers that multiplies to a positive number, adds to a negative number. Are there any numbers that multiply to 5 and add to negative 4 if their signs are the same? And the shorter answer is none exist. Which means this trinomial is prime. Now, that doesn't mean that there's no solution because we've already factored out a 2. So the answer would be 2 times the quantity x squared minus 4x plus 5. Finally, on number 3, we have a difference of two perfect squares. Again, we should have our pattern relatively memorized by this point, but that means that that factors into the square root of the first term plus the square root of the second term times the square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term. So we need to ask ourselves, what's the square root of 25? It is 5, so we should know that that factors into x plus 5 and x minus 5. We're going to continue. Okay, so next up, number 4. This is a not equal to 1 factoring, which means we need to do 2 times negative 3, which is negative 6. We want to look for a pair of numbers that multiplies to negative 6 and adds to positive 5. That would be 6 and negative 1. Now, we don't write that as our answers right away, we split that middle term up. So we have 2x squared, and then the 5x gets broken up into a positive 6x and a negative 1x. Notice how these two terms add to 5x. We are then going to group and factor by grouping. So we put the first two in parentheses and the second two in parentheses, and we factor out the greatest common factor. The first set of parentheses, both terms are divisible by 2x. So we're going to factor out a 2x. That would give us 2x times the quantity x plus 3. The second set of parentheses doesn't really have a GCF, but remember the goal is to make this binomial into x plus 3. So to do that, we're going to need to factor out a negative 1. So when we factor out negative 1, we will have negative 1 times the quantity x plus 3. The binomial is one of our two binomial factors. The other binomial factor is the numbers in front of those two sets of parentheses, 2x minus 1. 
that would be our solution. On number five, we would start by removing the GCF, which is five. So that would be five times x squared minus 16. Now at this point, you should recognize x squared minus 16 as a difference of two perfect squares, meaning that it factors again, just like number three did, into x plus 4 and x minus 4. And finally, on number 6, we have a GCF of 12. So we factor that out first, leaving x plus 12. This binomial does not factor again, making it our solution. That does it for the solutions to section 1. Again, if you missed a problem on section 1, you should have copied down that entire solution. If you got a problem right, you could skip that section of the video and you don't need to write anything down for the ones that you got 100% correct. If you missed even one point, you need to redo that problem on the sheet provided to you. Please watch the video for section 2 if you missed any points in that.